In my last video I put this together, it's from Snecktech.com and it's an EP Ever, EP Solar, Solar Charge Controller, well, Dashboard I think it's referred to as. And the hardware is pretty much finished, but there is no code whatsoever here on the Node MCU, the uh, ESP8266, so that's the job for this video. Now I've realised that these two jumpers have an important function after my previous video, and that's about communication. The Node MCU board here uses a serial to USB adapter here for the USB communication between the computer and the ESP8266. But we're also using the serial interface here via the RX and TX pins to communicate to the RS485 to serial adapter. So if you have both a USB cable attached and you're trying to communicate with the ESP8266 and this is connected and powered up, well, that's going to cause an awful lot of confusion. So uh, let's just take those uh, jumper headers off to ensure that that isn't a problem. Now, Jonathan has built the code using Platform I.O., which is actually something I've never used before. Uh, but to use that, you need Microsoft's Visual Studio code, and then you can add the Platform I.O. by uh, just searching here for Platform I.O. IDE and clicking install. And after a few minutes, um, hopefully, that installs successfully. Once that installs, you can click on this symbol over here and you should be uh, presented with the platform I.O. here. And uh, we need to import an Arduino project, I believe. Uh, I think that's what we do. And, uh, of course, we need to have downloaded the uh, code from Jonathan's website. Let's just jump into Chrome and get hold of that. So, in Chrome, we can go to Snectech dot com and i'll tell you right now you need to go to forward slash shop and on the snack tech shop we can soon find down here the uh, solar wi-fi dashboard controller kit uh, link and in here is a link to uh, both Jonathan's videos he's done on this project and a link to his forum where you will find a link to the code. Now, I'll place a link to all of this down in the description below, um, and I'm going to, I think, download the repository here, 186 megabytes. Uh, yeah, well, okay, download the repository. That'll take a minute or two. Now that I've downloaded and extracted that zip file, I've been able to find the board type here by searching for Node MCU and uh, finding this one here, which I think I need the Node MCU ESP12E module. And then um, on my C drive, I've extracted that uh, zip file to Jonathan EP Ever Solar Display. And uh, my screen's not very big, but presumably I can import that file. And hopefully, yes, I think I've imported that successfully. And this here in the SRC folder should be the majority of the code. Uh, now, I'm hoping everything is included here and if not i believe that platform io should be sourcing it for me but this blue tick or the white tick on the blue background should allow me to build the code and hopefully um it will yeah i'll allow that access please install git client from here Rah. More things to download. Now we have another 44 megabytes. So I am having a bit of trouble opening up this code, but it does seem that Platform IO, after a bit of time and a couple of restarts, has installed much of these uh, libraries here. But I'm struggling with Modbus Master um, and apparently Simple Timer. But let's deal with 
one at a time but if I click here on libraries uh, that seems to open up the uh, platform IO home and then can we search for Modbus is that going to get me anywhere uh, Modbus library for Arduino oh there's a few hang on Modbus master that's the one I'm after so where do we click click into that and install that has been successfully installed so uh, does that mean when I go back to my project which is here and I press compile yes I've got a bit further I now need to find a simple timer so let's go back to PIO home and click libraries and I'm searching for simple timer and again it seems to have found it for me and click on there and install that one hopefully I can now compile congrats that's been installed go back to the sketch here that's looking pretty good excellent so after a few moments it seems that it has completed it's created this bin file here and an elf file that's nice took 33 seconds excellent so i should be able to use the upload button and we'll see if the uh, unit starts flashing as that gets uploaded it looks like it's compiling it again and it is flashing i don't know if we can see that but yes it's definitely uploading something so if i look into my wi-fi here there's a few different ones let's see there's one called solar which is open let's connect to that and hopefully I'll see some sort of dashboard and now that I'm connected to the node MCU's SSID well I can go to the IP address and find this page so uh, we can configure Wi-Fi configure the Wi-Fi with no scan um, info might be quite interesting so we've got the chip information uh, the the MAC address the SSID that sort of thing that's quite useful to know i don't need to scan my network i know exactly uh, the ssid i want to put in here now i believe that the esp8266 has got this ip address from my router but it's replying with not found and that's not entirely surprising uh, because there's no wire connected up here and uh, the jumpers are disconnected as well but you'll notice that the esp is flashing slowly and i have three leds now illuminated here on the board i believe the red one indicates power the amber one indicates communication uh, when it's it, so it will flash normally as the communication over the rs485 uh, happens and the uh, green indicates wi-fi so as you can see the green is happy it's connected to wi-fi um, so it seems to think everything is okay so i'll plug this wire in and i'll put the jumpers back well here goes nothing uh, we've got power that's a good sign the brown uh, network cable that comes with the uh, ebox wi-fi never like that brown color uh, but now we can see that the center light the amber light is flashing uh, along with a transmit and receive led here on the uh, rs485 module uh, the green lights on as well so theoretically this should be working but i'm still getting a not found right well look in the text here it does have a not found this is a 404 error that is served by the web server so yeah it's not found something but i need to find out what it's not found 
Now after playing around and pressing a few buttons, I found this option here, Upload File System. Uh, now that, I'm hoping, means all the web pages. And as you can see, I've clicked it, it took 26 seconds, and uploaded some stuff. So now, if I go back to the browser and try again... I'm starting to get some, well, something better than not found. Oh, that's a bit interesting. This page is causing my laptop some peculiarities. Look at that, that's very weird. Right now, so that has rebooted. So let's see if I reload this page. Oh, did I see a battery voltage then? Uh, yes, I do, but this funny rendering is still happening. But that seems to be to do with the size of my screen. I think I found an odd bug there, haven't I? So look at this. We can see now some data on this web browser or within the web browser. The last 24 hours... Uh, there's a graph here showing the PV watts, the PV voltage, and the battery voltage. Obviously, it's only just connected, so it's got nothing to show. And we can see that the PV power, well, it is into the evening now. I'm getting less than one watt. Uh, the battery voltage is at 12.9 volts. The PV voltage is at 13.7. Um, and there's no current going in or from my battery. Well, that's probably true i can quickly turn a couple of loads on though and hopefully the battery current will increase or is that the charging current that may well be the charging current might it no pv at the moment so i'm not showing you a very interesting bunch of stats here am i now i've just opened up the web page uh, served by the esp8266 on my ipad to see uh well what it would look like and unfortunately it won't load it at all um no graphs no gauges not even the data for today the month the year the lifetime what a shame that is I've left the unit plugged in now for 24 hours so that we can see something on the graph. And uh, you can see that when the sun came up, uh, the battery maintained about 14 volts. I was uh, PV voltage was about 20 volts. Well, that's right at the moment because uh, I've just got two panels in parallel currently. And, uh, well, the watts, nothing to write home about there, is there about 50 watts peak but uh, that's all it takes to keep my battery at 14 volts so uh, that's all uh, that needs to be generated so yeah the, the graph i think it's quite nice isn't it so what do i think about the ep ever solar charge controller dashboard from snectech.com well it's been a slightly frustrating process i've not got on with platform.io very well but to other people that might be second nature it's taken me a lot of time to find where buttons are and that sort of thing it also seems slightly odd to uh, upload the website data separately to the code but i guess that might just be me i think there is space in the marketplace for this product an all-in-one solution and not having to rely on adapters and pcs or raspberry pis for example in a a caravan a trailer you might just want this one box connected to your solar charge controller and uh, that's all you need to be able to see the stats and information from that charge controller but for me it's a little bit late to the market because i've found alternative solutions to monitor my solar infrastructure here in the shed it's a shame that that web page can't render properly on my ipad or iphone but, to be honest, that's something that can probably be fixed in the code in the future, and this product is very new to the market. So, if this is a product that interests you, well, I'd keep a close eye on the website to see if there are any updates to overcome those issues that I've had. But, for now, at least, I think that's all from me. 
Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.